When it comes to going faster around a racetrack, the more usual approach is to add power. However, actually concentrating on the braking performance of the car can yield much bigger gains. We're here with Ashley from 909 Motorsport to talk about the Bosch Motorsport ABS unit. So before we get into the Bosch ABS itself, Ashley, can we talk about some of the shortcomings of factory ABS in a modified car on a racetrack scenario? Yeah, there's a lot of, uh, I guess, downsides to uh, a factory ABS system. Um, once you go into a modified car, um, once you change the weight of the vehicle, the center of gravity, um, the braking package on the car, then the, the factory ABS becomes suboptimal. So essentially the factory ABS, as you could rightly expect, is going to be calibrated for a stock standard factory car. And once you start modifying all of those parameters you just mentioned, then the calibration doesn't work as intended? Yeah, that's exactly right. And it's important to note too that on a, uh, on a factory car, the biggest, the biggest thing is stability, um, safety, driver comfort, those things come very high on the priority list from an engineering perspective. With Motorsport ABS, the primary um, directive is um, in improving the stopping. All right, well, let's just dive into that in a little bit more detail. So it's easy to overlook thinking that all ABS systems are created equal. But as you just mentioned, when an OE manufacturer is designing and calibrating an ABS system, it's really designed around the driver being able to maintain directional control of the vehicle as opposed to absolutely optimal stopping distances, correct? Yeah, that's right. And I guess they expect um, in a racing situation, the driver is a, uh, a high performance driver and they can control the vehicle under you know, um, racing conditions. On that note, when something like a Bosch ABS unit is installed, and again here the priority here is absolutely optimising stopping distances, maybe at the expense of some of the other parameters like driver comfort etc, you mentioned there that there is, there's an assumption that the driver is a professional or able to control the car better than in, in the, the average punter. So does that mean it is a little bit more difficult to control the car when the ABS is functioning in a motorsport environment like that? No, I wouldn't say it's more difficult. It, it's a more predictable um, pedal and the, and the stability of the car under racing conditions is predictable. Um, but it, it does require, if you're on a racetrack, I guess it is assumed that you have a level of ability. So let's talk about what we may notice with a stock ABS system on the racetrack and, and where the sort of suboptimal performance can come in. What, what sort of, uh, what will the driver actually notice? Um, the pedal pulsations uh, on the M5 ABS are a lot, lot smoother than most production stuff. Um, you'll find that uh, on some, particularly early model ABS units with a big brake package that they can lock lock tyres and everything um, and they can also actually lock the brake pedal out uh, and not stop the car. So yeah, it's very unpredictable. It, that sounds like what a lot of people refer to as, as ice mode, am, am I right there? Yeah, it, it's I think a factory sort of setup to maintain stability on slippery surfaces such as ice and if the ABS unit's working outside parameters you can come across that, that actual um, uh, symptom I guess, yeah. So in that instance you've still got directional control of the vehicle because obviously the wheels aren't locked but uh, not a lot of retardation? No, not at all. All right, so let's talk about a move to something like a Bosch Motorsport ABS system. It, it sounds like a, a fairly extensive uh, setup to install. What is actually involved? What, what do we need? Uh, it's car dependent, um, but the ABS, uh, M5 ABS Club Sport kit is uh, fairly complete. So it comes with a, um, a pre-made wiring loom for the car that's fairly generous. Uh, and you install that in the car, give it a power and ground. Uh, you have to mount your sensors and things which are all included. Um, and pipe it up. So it, it's a it's a fairly good start. Um, the wheel speed sensor is is a consideration depending model to model. Um, so you've got to have the sensors mounted in the correct location and the correct amount of teeth and that sort of thing. So it is dependent, and we we like to try and guide people when they set these up. All right. So if you've got a car that has an existing ABS system, is the potential for compatibility with the existing wheel speed sensor rings and wheel speed sensors, or do we need to go to a Bosch specific wheel speed sensor? Um, in most cases, you need to use the sensors that are supplied with the kit or the specific um, sensor type, which is a, a DF11 type sensor that is required. Um, some very late model cars have got that sensor from factory such as an R35 GTR, things like that, you can use the factory sensor. 
Um, so it is a bit vehicle dependent, but certainly old vehicles, you must change the sensor. The other element we see with most race cars is the move away from a brake booster and a dual style factory master cylinder to uh, what's referred to generically as a pedal box where we've got a separate circuit for the front and rear yep. uh, brake, brake master cylinders. Is that essential when going to uh, an aftermarket ABS system or is it just preferable? I would say it's preferable. I mean, it, it's it's the the system of choice would be to have a pedal box and, and dual master cylinders so that you could set the, the system up optimally um, but we have successfully installed the system into production style um, braking systems um, sometimes with an additional um, bias valve to allow the drivers some control over the bias um, and still got the booster systems in them uh, again it's not as good as a pedal box but in some categories um, it it states that the the production braking system rust remain so it, it does still work good. Uh, for, for those who aren't aware let, let's just talk a little bit about the brake booster because this is something that generally as I've mentioned is, is removed in a, in a race car. Mm -hmm. What's that brake booster for in a factory car and where are the potential downsides in other words why are they so commonly removed? I guess it's the, it's the driver's um, variability of assistance that that varies with vacuum and every time they grab the brake it's not exactly the same as what it was last time. Um, so I guess that's where in, in a proper racing application um, that having a pedal box is the ultimate way to go. You just want that consistency. Every time you hit the brake pedal it's going to feel the same and, and that is so important to the confidence of the driver, correct? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Let's just come back to talk about brake bias a little bit because you, you mentioned there you can utilise the Bosch Motorsport ABS with the factory style master cylinder but of course then the bias is, is not adjustable. Yeah. So in that instance are we relying on the ABS unit to actually do the, the biasing in other words, if you've got too much rearward bias hydraulically, then the ABS unit is going to have to be working over time, maybe releasing the, the brake pressure on the rears more than the front. Yeah, that's exactly right. And it, that is um, certainly not the way to set it up. Um, and particularly in something that's a factory four-wheel drive car like an Evo or a WRX, um, where they have a cross-link brake system from factory, um, you would get 50-50 um, braking, hydraulic braking effort front and rear. Um, uh, let's just actually clear that up. Crosslink, what do you refer to by crosslink? What's that actually mean? Uh, so that would be the right front and the left rear on the same muscle on the circuit and the opposite is true for the other side. So this is done by OEs to maintain essentially if there's a failure you've got at least one front and one, run, one rear wheel that's going to do the braking. Obviously not optimal but certainly when it comes to a motorsport application this is as far away from what we want as possible. Yeah that's exactly right and so we change that over when we do the install to a to a front rear split um, and then so that the driver then has uh, a balance of, um, of proportioning then we fit a, a valve to the car. It really all this comes down to I think is the fact that a lot of people would assume that uh, you can fit the ABS unit and that's going to do all of the work for you which I mean to a degree is correct but essentially if you can get the mechanical braking package correct or as close to the window as possible then the ABS is going to be able to do a better job. Absolutely yeah and what you will find too is if uh, for example a car had too much rear bias um, and you didn't um, address that uh, the ABS on the rear will cut in to stop the car from spinning, losing control, locking a rear wheel uh, and the driver might not push hard enough to optimise the, the front braking yeah. effort. So yeah, it's, it's certainly something you don't want to happen. You want to have the balance as close to possible as you can and have the ABS as an overlay over the top of that. Can we talk a little bit about driving style with a proper motorsport ABS system? Is there anything we need to do differently when driving the car? Uh, particularly I'm talking here about the maximum braking effort areas on the track, not where we're just brushing the brake to, to uh, bleed a little bit of speed. Yeah sure and, and it is, it, it's, it's um, a big change for a lot of seasoned drivers that haven't been used to using motorsport ABS um, to retrain your brain. It's uh, rather than driving like you would without ABS where you you might sort of uh, have a sharp application to settle a, the drop the nose of the vehicle and then bleed the brakes off, you, you don't do that with the ABS. Um, it's a sharp shot application and, and hold and maintain through the braking zone. 
So essentially you want more pressure than you would typically produce so that the ABS can bleed off that pressure to reduce a lockup, but then it's got that excess of pressure there to reintroduce to, to get the braking working again. Yeah, that's right. And, and the, you have to be able to have the wheels locked under all situations so that the ABS can modulate because it can't generate any pressure. It can only take it away. And I mean, that really also comes back to my previous comment that the, the basic mechanical package of the braking system has to be right before you add the ABS. In other words, you need something with a, enough uh, brake torque to actually be able to lock the wheels. Yeah, that's true. And it's also important to remember if you have a marginal braking system um, that's uh, you know, right at the limit, before you put ABS on, you're probably going to be over the limit once the ABS is on because you're going to be working those brakes harder. So this is going to essentially be introducing more heat into the braking package than you would conventionally? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, last thing I want to talk about is the little uh, adjuster that we see with the Bosch Motorsport system, I think a uh, 12 position if I'm correct mm -hmm. there. And what is that used for? How, how should the driver treat that? What, what sort of control does that give? Uh, essentially it's a, a variable uh, slip adjustment, um, so a, a, a wet and a dry setting would be the best way to describe it. Um, and a wet, a wet situation, the tyre takes longer to recover, so the algorithms in the ABS allow the, the tyre longer to recover under those situations when it's modulating the brake. So this does become a bit of a trial and error sort of adjustment to just see what works best for the driver and the car combination plus the track conditions? Yeah that's right the driver can feel it and we can see it in the data so we can help uh, people dial that in um, depending on the, the situation but then it's sort of up to the driver as another tunable driver function not unlike a, a, a bias or an adjustable anti-roll bar. Uh, also just in terms of the outputs from the Bosch Motorsport ABS unit, uh, is there anything there that can be logged by your ECU or any interaction between maybe the Bosch ABS, your ECU or maybe your dash logger? Yeah, there's a, a CAN output, um, so that can be fed into a logger or a display um, and it, it logs all the wheel speed channels, brake pressure, um, the 5-ax accelerometer. Uh, in the car, so there's a lot of vehicle dynamic stuff that can be taken from that, not just ABS type stuff. All right, it's been really great to get some more insight into the product. Uh, actually, if people want to find out more about uh, 909 Motorsport, how are they best to reach out? Uh, you can find us on our website, www.909motorsport.com.au. Great, thanks for your time. No worries, thank you. If you liked that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, and if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.